Hey, Cloud, got some news. Apparently, the powers that be like what we have to offer. Gave us permission to race in the Gold Cup. So I went and signed you up as soon as I could. After all, you're the best jockey I know. The cup is three races, and you get points based on where you place in each. Bird with the most at the end wins. But the races are nothing like you've ever seen before. Gotta be on the ball if you want to take the top spot. Anyway, when you're ready to face off against the finest riders this side of the continent, head on over to registration. Sure. I say the gold cup, Joe. Which of these races will you be competing in? I can't believe it. This is really happening. We're about to race in the Gold Cup. Oh, hell. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for this moment. We made it! <laughs> Rain it in. Couldn't even if I wanted. Okay, Cloud. Your bird's ready and raring to go. All that's left is... <sighs> Gee, if that ain't the stupidest. Obviously, some sore losers are trying to raise a stink. We'd best nip this thing in the bud. You tell them the reason we keep winning is because we know how to take care of our birds. Long time no see, Merc. And Miss Tifa, too. Should have told me you were dropping by. Would have given you the royal treatment. Oh, hey, Sam. <laughs> Gotta say, I'm surprised to see your name on the jockey bus. What sparked your interest in bird racing? This and that. Fell into it, did you? Well, you're a natural. Not just anybody can break my ace of streak. <laughs> that was just a practice race. My official record is still pristine. This is the Gold Cup. The contest for which Hyperion and I have trained non-stop. You got the drop on us before, but you won't get lucky twice. Now we're talking. You two are going to give the people a race to remember. <laughs> You're... Billy, I work on Bill's ranch. You might remember my parents, Will and Clara, since you killed them. Did I? Don't play dumb. You were mad their business was eating into your profits. So you got them addicted to gambling. It was all part of your grand plan. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't say the story is that simple, but the truth can be one bitter drink. You ain't nowhere near old enough to keep it down. I ain't just some stupid kid, and I'll prove it to you. If my man here wins the gold cup, that's proof I'm old enough to hear your truth. You're on. Peddly little ranch like yours ain't got a chance, but best of luck to y'all. about this? Pressure's on now. Yeah, well, all I gotta do is win it all, right? Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gold Saucers Chocobo Racetrack, which today plays host to racing's biggest competition, the Gold Cup. Over three grueling races, our contenders will push themselves to the limit. The world is watching with bated breath as the best of the best take their places for what will surely be one heck of a race. Fan favorite Joe will be riding the Chocobo Hyperion for Sam's delivery service. And given his track record, many expect a decorated champion to be first across the finish line. All right, folks, our contenders are ready. Every gate is occupied, so this is it. The moment you've been waiting for, the Gold Cup!
hope you're ready for more, ladies and gentlemen, because we're just getting started. Here comes our next race. This is turning into one heated tournament, folks. But who will be riding home with the gold cup? Only one more race remains in this exciting event. Let's see who comes out on top.
Gold Cup goes to none other than Class Price and Bill Chocobo Ranch. He's taken three races in a row in an unprecedented flawless victory. No one saw this snake in the grasslands coming, and now the racing world is sure to remember his name. Now it's your turn. Son, do you know what kind of business your parents were trying to break into after they got their ranch up and running? Wild Chocobo Conservation. It's no secret that environmental changes have been hard on the birds. And what's bad for them is bad for business. Unfortunately, nobody seemed to care. Saving the planet ain't cheap, you see. Folks know somebody's got to pay for it. But they'll be damned if it's going to be them. So while everybody else turned a blind eye, one couple faced the problem head on. Your parents. They had everything they'd need. The know-how, drive, and passion. Thing is, none of that counts for much if you ain't got the gill. So they went around taking out loans left and right, till they were swimming in debt, which is when they ran into the meanest shark of them all. Reckon you know who. Don Corneo. Uh, I didn't know it at the uh, time, but that sleazy son of uh, a bitch was rounding up folks and shipping yeah, them off yeah, to yeah, Shinra yeah. for their experiments. <laughs> oh, Will and Claire figured it was yeah, the only yeah. way they'd be able to save their business, so they signed up. <laughs> A while later, Will paid me a visit, begged me to take the reins in his and Clara's stead. He wanted what was best for those birds. As did I, so I took him up on the offer and bought him out. And since then, I ain't seen either one of your parents. It was only after that I heard about Corneo's antics through the grapevine. Couldn't do a thing to stop him. Not with Shinra in the wings, that's for sure. They say anything about me? Or my sister? Not to me, no. Don't go thinking they forgot about you. You and your sister were always at the forefront of their minds. The business might have gone south, but they chose to give up their future to make sure you two could have yours. That's why you got a roof over your head, a place to work, and food to eat. I can't believe it. I've had it wrong this whole time. Son, I'd be surprised if there's a wild chocobo out there that doesn't owe its freedom to your mom and your dad, one way or another. 
hell of a legacy to live up to. But if you want it, the business is yours. Just know this, it ain't gonna turn a profit. So unless you can find a way to fund it, you'll wind up in the same trouble as your folks. Think it over. Maybe chat with pop too. Call it. Heads or tails, son. Get it right, and I'll float you some operating capital. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm gonna do this on my own. Me and Chloe and Gramps, I mean. Hmm. You truly are their boy. Got your old man's pig head and your mother's backbone. Not bad. I... I'm gonna do my parents proud. You'll see. It may take some time, but I'll make sure their legacy lives on. I don't get it. If Gramps knew all this, why did he make it sound like Sam was to blame? He was probably trying to protect you, to stop you from going after Corneo or Shinra on your own. So he pinned it on Sam knowing that your uncle would be okay shouldering the blame. Shouldn't have to tell you this, but seeking revenge would be stupid. I know. Still, if an opportunity did happen to come along, you'd help me out, wouldn't you? Hey, I'm a world-famous jockey now. Can't be associated with that kind of stuff. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you had me going there. Remember me? You're that guy from Corneo's. Leslie. What are you doing out here? You look like you've been through hell. Got wind my girl might be out this way. Had to follow up. See if there was truth to it. Well, you saw. After the plate fell, the trio opened the place to refugees. The town tripled in size. Man, if you thought it was lively before. Unfortunately, when Corneo pulled up stakes, he took all that Shinra money with him. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Walmart's days are numbered. Madam M's trying to work her magic, but I don't know. Sector 7's still a mess. Probably gonna stay that way for a while. Expressway collapsed right after the plate. Then out of the blue, the company decides it needs a new president. It seems pretty clear Shinra doesn't give a shit about Sector 7. Undercity especially. But that shouldn't come as a surprise. The people have stepped up, though. Clearing the rubble, helping the injured, locating the missing. In case I didn't tell you, her name's Merle. After you guys left Wall Market, I started asking around. Hoped one of her friends might know something. I shouldn't have bothered. Even if they did have info, they're not dumb. They wouldn't dare blab to a former Corneo crummy. But I was able to find out she wasn't in Midgar anymore. And ever since then, I've been moving from town to town, looking for leads. So the thing is, Gus is running a special competition, and a woman is the prize. Word around the Dust Bowl is she fled here from Midgar. It's just a hunch, but I think she might be who I'm looking for. She's a prize? That's sick. Gus is a real piece of shit, to put it mildly. You do that? <laughs> Monsters did. 
Gus is calling it a party, but it's an excuse to see blood. Lots of it. He pits people against fiends, and his money's on the ladder. I lost. So this is where you guys come in. Join the party, win, and free that woman. Still a merc, aren't you? No reason not to. True. Please. We'll do it. <laughs> so you know, need a team of five to sign up. In the ring, though? It's one on one. <laughs> and humans only, I'm afraid. I'm counting on you. And so's the woman. If anyone can put Gus in his place, it's Walmart, it's reigning champs.
an upset like this! Cloud the Knife's team has made it to the finals! But, playtime's over! This here's the real moment of truth! Are you ready? I wanna hear some noise, people! Give it up for everyone's nightmare, the Murder Machine Supreme! <laughs> Is our Merc and his crew have what it takes to be the first? Will they be able to claim our darling little grand prize? We're about to find out, folks. This is the moment we've been waiting for. A desert Yes! 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 
my man! Way to give the people a show. Gotta say, I never thought my little baby would get so thoroughly crushed. Damn it! Do you have any idea how much kill I spent on that thing? You inconsiderate son of a bitch! It's done. It's all good. Gotta look to the future. Our future. What do you say? We make one hell of a team. We clean up at the fights and the races. Come on, where you wanna. No. <laughs> Don't do me like that. I'll throw in some perks on top. That should sweeten the deal, right? Where's the girl? Oh, so you really were after our little prize. You so are turned dog. Well, you're welcome to it. You earned it. Just as a little show of good faith. Go on, don't be shy. And then maybe think over that deal. Pretty close. Hey. Huh? Hello. Where did you come from, beautiful? You looking to get in good at the gust, man? Don't ever pull this crap again. You offer any more people as prizes, they'll have to scrape you off my shoe. Got it? Yes, ma'am. So, how did the reunion go? Different girl. What? Was just a random tourist from Midgar. Fell for a scam at the saucer and ended up down here. I sent her back up. Made sure she's safe. Oh. I'm sorry. Don't be. I'll find her eventually. I'm sure of it. Anyway. What's next for you and the others? We're looking for something too. Need to find it ASAP. <laughs> Funny. Always the same story with us. Good luck to you. Thanks. And you. Picture in any way, shape, or form. Are you telling us what you're doing? <laughs> Cut it out! <sighs> I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> That's gonna cost you two grand. Two grand? Although, for a visage of such pulchritude, if I had the money, I'd pay your price in a heartbeat. But alas. I'll pay you if you rein it in. Don't think I caught your name. Oh. Oh, my sincerest apologies. I'm Neve, and I write children's books for a living. Which sounds fun, but it's not, since right now I'm flat broke. I spent my last remaining gill to come scout out this village. I was hoping to use something here in my next book, but... of failure stalks me, looming from behind every corner. Will my creative instincts ever return? Or am I doomed to chase them like a rat in a life-size maze? Wait, what did you say? And that sounded a lot like... <laughs> I'm a rat trapped in a life-size maze! Sorry, but I just gotta ask. You're Mead Mabel, aren't you? Author of Life in the Endless Maze. <laughs> That's my daughter's favorite book in the whole world. Can I get an autograph? Wait, actually, can I shake your hand? Uh, uh, of course! Anything for a fan. I mean, I always assumed I didn't have any. But it's an incredible honor to finally meet an aficionado of my work. Oh. <laughs> you said you were scouting this village for book ideas, yeah? <laughs> if it's all right with you, we'd love to help. 
Got the perfect guy to serve as inspiration, too. What? You are perfect! I am? Yes, I can see it now. A warrior beast with fur as fiery as his burning soul! <laughs> Curse this feeble frame! My mind races, yet my hands float along as if trapped in treacle! Miss Mabel, are you all right? <sighs> Resolve, suffering, odyssey. Help me to express these themes by taking pictures which embody them. I beseech you. Resolve, suffering, and odyssey. Those are great themes. We're gonna need locations to do them justice, though. There's a riverbed by the edge of the forest that'll work. Come on, let's hit it up. I can't wait to see your photos! They're sure to help me write a story like no other. Alright. First up, we gotta capture Resolve. And in my humble opinion, there ain't no better backdrop than right here, where jungle meets desert. Look right at the camera, and think of when we made our heroic charge straight into this godforsaken tank. Alright. Make sure to get my good side. Make sure to catch my good side, all right? Let's see. Next, we're off to, uh, oh, I know, the Mako Reactor. Come on, we gotta keep this thing rolling, just like the book. Escape the maze and be free. Well, here we are. <sighs> Can't say I've got fond memories of this dump, considering, but hey, that's why it's perfect for capturing the theme of suffering. All you gotta do is picture Scarlet's ugly mug, and we're golden. Easy as pie, am I right? Okay, one pensive looking Nanaki coming up. This is gonna be the best one yet. Okay, the last one is Odyssey. Don't know about you, but that screams airstrip to me. Let us fly on the wings of dreams together and claim our freedom. You know, like the book. This is the last one, so make sure you look extra spiffy red. Theme is Odyssey. Recall the way you felt about setting off for Cosmo King. The nerves, the excitement, the joy, the hope. So, strike a pose like, uh... No worries, I got it. <laughs> Step aside, I'll show you how it's done. Back to Miss Mabel. Here you go, Miss Mabel. Think these will spark your imagination? What is this feeling? It's as if my hand has become a conduit for the gods of prose. There once was a crimson warrior who everyone loved. He was so strong they called him the king of the forest. But he wanted to be even stronger, so he went on an adventure. That's actually not too bad of a start. While on his journey, he came across a group of three brave knights. The knights were very impressed, and they told him, You are the king of which the legends foretold! Please, lead our people to victory! Oh, wow. I like where this is going. 
He gazed off into the distance and with conviction declared, Though I began my journey as king of the forest, that is not where I shall end it. My future lies far beyond the woods. This is bound for the bestseller list. A surefire hit. Right, Cloud? You never know. Oh, man, you really just don't get it, do you? Listen, you gotta have faith. If you don't write something you think will sell, it won't. So believe. Try it, but quite true. Mm. Oh, I can't wait to read this to my Marlene. Don't want to rush you, but I hope you can finish it soon. Thank you, and I promise that the instant it's complete, I'll make sure to send you and your daughter a copy. Oh, right, and one for our bestial brainchild. <laughs> I'll be fine. Hey there. Heading out? On patrol. Got a slightly troubling report. But not troubling enough to let us go with her. I'm captain. It just makes sense for me to go. Yeah, but not by yourself. We're talking in circles. If I may, as you can tell by looking at him, Cloud here has a lot of experience taking care of trouble. So, why don't you send him on patrol instead? Don't worry, I'll go. Give you time to talk things over. What do you think? Mm. Okay then, if you've got time to spare. Recently, folks have spotted some foul-looking fiends outside the village. I want you to head to the observation tower. Take a look around. See if you notice anything suspicious. Just leave it to him. I think I spotted something. Let's check it out. Done. Nope. Not the fiend we want. Should probably. 
probably take another peek from the outlook. Cloud, look over there. I just saw something moving. Bingo. Let's not lose sight of it. Cloud already knew that. Yeah, well... <laughs> View from the Outlook was pretty nice, huh? I like to relax there. Plus, it's easy to spot people coming our way well in advance. Wait, are you... expecting someone? I've got a lot of questions I've been meaning to ask you, you know. Not so. Fine. But I don't have all day. You get one question, and one question only. As silly as it sounds, someone who isn't with us anymore. But he doesn't feel gone. It's like I wouldn't be surprised if I woke up one day and saw him outside our gates. He's not an ex or anything like that what he was, but I really miss the guy. I get it. Wish I could see him again. Make sure he's alright. Though if I'm being honest, it's just for my sake, isn't it? Not his. Something happened between you? This is gonna sound cryptic and weird, I know, but I stole part of his life from him. And I gotta carry that. Hold on. Didn't I say one question? Anyway, this world of ours is about to change. That's not my gut talking. The writing's been on the wall for a while now. And there's nothing we can do to stop what's coming. I bet you could, if anyone. That's sweet. You know, I think I see it now. What he saw in you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah? Yeah? 
And on that note, let's head back.